Absolutely. Absolutely. You're the one that's, that's going to hold your, hold your um, the NIF hostage. Madison, give me a thumbs up on that, that nobody held your NIF hostage. You're in, you, know. you might have to explain that for people who are tuned in for the first time who don't know well, what that means. So what happens is, is there's these online agencies and one of them reached out to me and said, hey, if you promote our site, we'll give you $10 per referral. And mm-hmm. I just said no. Because what they were doing is they then um, do a low cost, get your NIF for you. But mm-hmm. what that does is it cuts out your appointment. So let's say you spend 150 with them. And now for 150, you could have had a full appointment with a CPA, done your tax planning, and he would have got your NIF. Then he's there for you when you need him. So it kind right. of takes you away from that. I don't get any referral fees for any of that. I don't. Yeah. I just refer to good people. So what happens is, is they round Robin to all kinds of people, like just whatever they're going to take a chunk of your money, organize the document, send it out to different accountants that have the time. And then whoever you get, you get, and that person could hold your NIF hostage. What they do is they're sent when they set up your NIF, they they, you know, set up the, the financial system and they get a username and password. And it, to change your username and password, you have to log in and they mail you um, the, the change on a card, on a, well, on they a card do, right? mail. Yeah. But it will always have, because you don't live here and they don't communicate with, with anyone who doesn't live here yet. So when you're getting uh, it before you this, what you're here, saying, you're, you're, when you they say they, hostage. you're talking about finances who, who are the one who send you the details. Yes. But, yes. But, but at this point, they're sending them to your fiscal representative. Yes. Yes. And that is a strange thing in its own right, isn't it? That's a weird yeah. thing, Portugal, that your your f- fiscal representative has the only access they have is not through a professional login, but using your login, yes. which your what, Veronica, what Veronica is saying, they then hold hostage because mm-hmm. if you say, can I have my logins, please? And they say no. There's nothing you can really do about it. Is there There's except- nothing you can do? There was one guy that was all stressed out and he had to get the golden visa and he had to do it now and he didn't find a property and I was trying to help him, but he just went in and did the like uh, financial investment where you put the money in the bank and then you can get it that way. There's like, if you put in a million bucks, which don't recommend to the Portuguese banks, but sh- anyway, um, he had this law company that then set him up with his username and password. And when he wanted to, he actually came over here and needed it to make some changes to give to his accountant. They said, well, that's 600 euros. And Whoa, he said, well, that, is, said, that is hostage. Well, been, yeah, as a, as a, you know, we've been your fiscal representative for two years and we charge, you know, 250 a year plus this fee plus, and they'd already feed the heck out of him because it's like 10,000 euros to even do a golden visa. Outrageous. It's a government fees. That's right. a government um, fees. Do you know what, you Marika? Have them. So you have to be careful with these places. Carl will have something to say about that. And he was, he was smiling wryly as though he may have heard of this before going on here in Portugal. Big round of applause, please. And onto the screen. Hello. Oh, look, Hello. Look, Hello. Look, Hello. Look, Morning. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Monica. It looks like naked attraction now, doesn't it? We'll move the camera down so that you can see the face of the two contestants above you this morning. <laughs> let me let me take <laughs> all right, Veronica. You're okay there? All right, I think I'm fine. I think <laughs> oh, it's all right. Hold on a minute. I'll just take that off the screen so we can see what's oh there we go. Oh, I was okay. having so much fun. Oh, good morning. You you morning. were smiling as you were sipping your tea there. I saw you. You heard about this NIF hostage situation. Well, it's not that specifically. It's just that it, it seems like a typical kind of thing where that, that kind of thing would happen, you know, passing yeah. your, something so important over to a third party uh, and yeah. there, not, there not being another system in place to, to manage that more efficiently. I mean, it just sounds very dangerous. And, yeah, once once somebody's got those details and that, effectively they can hold you hostage, can't they? They can absolutely send you bills and send you fees and say, well, this is 100 euros, that's 500 euros, and, and what are you going to do? You're going to... Yeah. Going to be yeah, because to they, yes, if they were really unscrupulous, they could say, well, actually, you've got um, this bill to pay in the finances portal, which we, we've got access to. Mm-hmm. If you send oh. us another 500 euros to pay it off, we'll forward it on. Yeah. And you don't know if that's true Criminal or not. Criminal mind you? right there. Criminal yeah. mind. Okay. Oh, wait, that way. Criminal mind. Okay. Where? There we go. There we go. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but the, the, the thing is as well, there are, there are people out there who are, who are that un, uh, unscrupulous they and there are people, people who are global as well. And when you put those two together, you, you'll hear stories of people who have been ripped off for thousands, you know. Um, yeah. I don't think it happens that much, but um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fancy it. No. Well, and you're not just gullible, about though. to come out about scammers. Um, one of my friends really? is working with a huge um, fraud investigator that he actually did the fraud in Luxembourg and stuff. There's a lot of fraud going on in the hills of the Algarve, like people selling properties they don't own. Um, yeah. There's a lot. You have to use a reputable agent yep. with a reputable shop that somebody has referred to you. You know, right. I just had somebody in town ask me, oh, Veronica, thanks for all your help. You know, we just went by this agency and found this listing. What do you think of this area? And I'm like, I'm not getting involved. I don't know that agent. They don't work here. I've never yeah. seen them. I've never heard of them. I'm not saying anything. If you're going to go rogue and go with somebody that we have not referred to you, that we know is trusted. Well, I, you're on I, your own. I did a presentation for the... Um... Um, what was it called? The vir that virtual summit that's on at the minute. I forgot. The oh, name. you just did it too. Okay. I did one about renting uh, yesterday, and one of the things I said there, you know, if you're going to go it alone, just be aware that there, there are these scams out there. And, yeah. and if you're using an agent, an agent is duty bound to sort of examine the property first. That goes for whether it's a rental or whether you're buying it, of course. But even with a rental, check who owns the property. Get the you know the cabinet de prédial get the, the, the owner's ID and do some background checks and make sure because there's always these, there's always, uh, um, you know, it, it, it could happen, let's say, where you've got a married couple or, or a couple that's going to be divorced. Oh my you know? word, yeah. And there's, there's a difference of opinion on what to do with the property. Now, let's say one of them says, hey, you know, I'm going to rent this place out and the other person doesn't want to do that. Now, if you, I don't know, pony up three months of deposit and sign a lease and you think you're in somewhere and then after the fact you find out that actually... Um, you know, it's null and void because uh, the contract means nothing because it's not actually signed by the owners, you know, let's say if there's two of them. So there's lots of examples and reasons why you would want to use um, a professional um, to, to sort of mitigate the risk of those kind of things happening, for sure. That's no a big message. That is a big message that's coming through this morning at this it's stage. Huge. Of it's huge. It's huge. And he's one of my referral partners. I just sent him a... Yeah. a uh, yeah, you did. Thanks uh, for that. <laughs> yeah. Because we yeah, use the people we know, love, and trust. You know. Yes, absolutely. Same, same here. Um, and you know, you, you're seeing people on the. This is not fly by night. These these two are here every month to be held to account on the screens of Good Morning Portugal. Along and with we them. will give you a sound drubbing if you get scammed, and we say why you could have that avoided this. Quite nice. Carl, no. does a sound drubbing sound quite nice to you? I think it's going to have to be a worse threat than that. Sound drubbing right? first thing in the morning, yeah. It sounds, it sounds, good. It sounds all right to me, that. <laughs> oh, it's the British and American English again. I've messed up, haven't I? I'll have some of that. <laughs> okay. All right. While we're on scams, missing like money. Good morning, Carl Show. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this was sent to me. Thank you, Johnny, for sending me this. Uh, this is posted on the Expats Forum, um, Expats Portugal Forum. And um, U.S. and Canadian citizens, apparently, check for your unclaimed property before you emigrate. Uh, Missingmoney.com. Now, I'm not, I can't verify this. I, I'm, I'm passing this on as something that was passed on to me by a reputable source, I have to say. You can check this to see if you have funds held by your state's or province's unclaimed property department. Just guessing it might be easier to obtain these funds before you move. I poked around the site yesterday, uh, says Johnny, found three claims for my dad and one for his wife, and one for my neighbour. The site notes the value range of each claim. Hope it helps, and would enjoy hearing from those that are reunited with their forgotten assets. Do you think, I mean, it's got to be worth a try, hasn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Veronica? Or is this something you're aware of that's a bit dodgy? Or are you looking at your I, phone you now? Know, I've, I've heard about it in the States, too, but I'm like, I kind of pay my taxes properly, and I don't overpay. And I'm like, I, it, to me, it just doesn't sound like there would be missing money Unless I don't but, know. See, the thing is, like, though, they're, they're I overpaid hundred thousand in taxes last year. Darn. Maybe my kids will find it ten years from now. There are there are a lot of people. I know this from from the UK because it's a, it's a bit of an industry there where people will sort of chase up, um, um, you know, tax uh, refunds and stuff like that. I think a lot of people just go through life and don't realise what they're paying. They think they're paying the right amount. Now that can come back <laughs> and bite you in the backside 
obviously you, you might owe the state money in, in, the, in the worst case. But I think it does happen. People just don't know or have been given bad advice. They've been given the wrong tax code, all kinds of things like that. And you, you've been paying the wrong amount for years and it can add up to the tidy sum. So I think if there's a free service and, and you don't want to do the work yourself, then why not? You know, give it a go. You no, know, people spend a hundred euros on a nice dinner. They'll go out with their kids, their wives, get a bunch of gin and tonics and spend a hundred euros. Spend a hundred euros to have someone do your taxes. Yeah. You're in a freaking foreign country, even at home. I mean, yeah, I didn't true. even know. I pay for my taxes. I always have and People are like, I can do it myself. I'm like, good for you. I don't even want to try. I'll do one less dinner out or one shopping trip less. And I mean, my, I didn't even know there's all this money that was coming in last year. I didn't even live there or the year before, whenever the all these credits were coming in from America for just there's COVID. So here's well, some free money. So they're yeah, like, oh, you know, yeah, you've got all these credits and you, you're getting a refund. And I'm like, I don't even live there. Okay. We, were, we were guilty of doing that here, actually, a few years ago. Uh, my wife was sort of finding her way through the tax portal, did our own tax return, which was very simple because uh, we were out and maybe both of us weren't working because we've not been here that long and that kind of thing. Um, and so we've got three kids. We've got various allowances and things like that. But we did our tax return this year and we got a 10 euro refund. Well, that just doesn't sound right. But we're too busy getting on with life. We ignored it. So we came to last year and uh, I've got an accountant for uh, my real estate uh, work. And I asked them, I just said, well, what would it cost if you were to sort of submit our taxes? You know, there's all the information. And it was, it was something ridiculous, like 80 euros for them yeah, to go right. through it. So my wife had done it. And again, she'd gone from expecting that we would get something like, a, you know, several hundred euros in a rebate to us owing it. And she said, it can't be right. So I said, tell you what, let's just pass it on to them and see what they can do. They literally came back an hour later and said, you, you do an 800 euro refund. This year. And that There's was your hundred bucks. That and I thought, well, so I'm guilty of it as well. You think, you know, we like to have a go at things and try them, but it can be so complicated and convoluted. Yeah. Just, you just don't really know what you're doing, do you? Yeah. Stick to selling houses, Carl. Come yeah. on. <laughs> we spend that much on a dinner and don't blink an eye. We go out drinking with friends. Here's eight, here's 10, here's eight. And before you know it, there's your 80 euros. And we don't think twice about it. But the once a year that especially here, now that you're in a foreign country, if you mess up back home, you mess up here, it can affect your status. If you're like a tax fraud person because you didn't know back home or a tax fraud person here because I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to take all the Portuguese documents and try to figure out and, and identify Portuguese tax code. It boggles my brain. There's only two things you need. You need to pay your tax guy. You need to pay your lawyer. It's not that much in Portugal. You're, yeah, you're, 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 well said. And it's you're not just a matter of being gullible. Someone used the word gullible before. It's it's about being a stranger as well, isn't it? You're at a disadvantage. You're not just gullible necessarily. You may be, but you, you're at a disadvantage. And I do like we do like the independent spirit, but this probably not best applied in these situations. And it sounds like Carl Hyde is now a convert to oh, what yeah. Veronica's talking about. He's got seven hundred euros in his pocket now. He didn't have yeah, exactly eight hundred. Yeah, well, because um, if, if you subtract the cost.